Because I know that you love the new Shopify code editor, I saw it on Reddit, you have only good things to say about it. I decided to make another video explaining some things that I didn't in the last video. By the way, if you want to see the last video where I talk about this code editor and the basics of using it, you're gonna find the link in the description. In this video, I want to show you how you can create new templates because I didn't cover this in the last video and a couple of other issues and things that you consider confusing. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, in the other video, we talked about how some of these folders that you have inside your theme don't take certain type of files. Like for example, if you want to create a new file inside this sections folder, you have to add either a liquid extension to the file or a JSON extension to the file. In the prior code editor Shopify had, they were limiting us to certain type of files. So in the process of creating a new section, for example, you would say new section and then you had a pop-up where you could add the name of the file and then you had to pick your extension. But in this case, because this is an advanced code editor, they give us like full control of what we create, but this comes with a catch. If you create inside the section files, for example, a file that is not in these two extensions, you're gonna first get an error down below here and then the file will get removed from the folder. It would be better if Shopify would prevent creating the wrong type of file in the wrong folder that would be less confusing, but this works as well. So if I add here a new file and I say new JS, this would be the wrong type of file for this folder. If I add it in there, the file gets added. We get this error down below. And if I refresh the page, we see that the file gets removed. So we don't have the JS file anymore inside that folder and we're gonna get this error because this file doesn't exist anymore. Now in order to create a template, if you are not a coder, you should not create it from here, my point of view, but if you still want to do it, you can just go right here to page. Let's say you want to create a template for the about page. You're gonna go to the page default template. As you can see, the default page template has some code inside. You're gonna copy everything in there. And if you want to create another template for a new page, you're gonna go inside the templates folder and you're gonna click on new file and you have to name it this way so you're gonna have to add in there page first so this is a page dot about minus us or whatever title you want to give it and then you're going to add the dot json extension and by hitting enter we're going to create a new page template that is named about us and i'm going to enter that as you can see we have now an error at the bottom and that is because always this templates must have inside json so i'm going to just paste the json i copied from the default page. This is actually the same process that happens behind the scenes when you create a template from the customizer. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So once you've pasted the code inside the new template, you're going to save and then the new template will get saved in there. Another problem that I have with this code editor is that this save button doesn't change no matter what. So I enjoyed the functionality of the other code editor where the save button would turn blue when you had some unsaved changes inside your file but this one doesn't react at all and you will have to just save and save again because you don't know if your file is saved anyways it should have here a dot or a one sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't so like right now if i add some new text in here let's say i add here some text i don't see any dot appearing anywhere i don't know if this is a bug or this is the normal functionality anyways so now i would just have to save and make sure that i saved i usually press it multiple times you can also use command s or control s and now if i go back to my dashboard i can choose this new about us template that i just created so if i go to my dashboard and then i go to my pages over here i'm gonna have underneath uh, the templates tab here i'm gonna have the about us template that i just created and it is an exact copy of the default page template and the same thing happens if you go to customize and you create a template from there so for ease of use if you're not a developer and you're not comfortable with the new code editor you can create your page templates or product templates directly from the customized dashboard you can go to the customized dashboard and then to whatever you want to create let's say you want to create a page template 
and in here you're gonna have this button that says create template and you're gonna be guided in here you're gonna add your title and then you're going to add the file that your new template is based on so for example if you want to create a new template that is based on the about us template you can create it from here if you want to have a template that is based on the default template you can select the default name your new template like sizings and then create template and the creation of the file will be managed in the back end you're going to have here a preview of that template and so on and now if i go to pages here i will be able to choose the sizings template as well so you don't actually have to create your templates inside the code editor if you don't want to now this new code editor has a lot of features that you have to discover like for example you can close all the tabs at once thing that you couldn't do in the other code editor like you can close everything up and then start again working on a different task now in the old code editor if you've created a section the section would be created with schema inside so if you create now a new section section inside the section folder let's say new section liquid this section will be created as an empty file you don't have any schema inside and I'm not sure if the file will get saved as empty let's just save and see if it's going to stay there so now if I refresh the page this section should be still there and it didn't get removed but I would anyways add some basic schema in there so that I know for sure that my section stays there until I can start working on it and I'm going to save that and next I'm going to look at the timeline because I saw a lot of people they were confused about the versioning options that the other code editor had in this timeline you're going to see here the change log for that section so let's take this section over here doesn't have any changes yet if I go here and I add another p tag and inside the p tag I add test you're gonna see that in here you're gonna have a bunch of changes and if you go to original this is the comparison of what the file looks now and how it looked before and then you have all the versions and these are auto saves because if I go here you can see that it saved once when I added this tag and then it saved once when I added 1p and then it saved once when I added this hashtag and so on so you have all the changes in detail in here you can go to settings and search for auto save settings so auto save and adjust the save time because I think you don't need so much detail and if you want to see what the settings for VS Code are you can go ahead and research the settings and adjust this editor to your liking like for example you can change the font size to 14 I think this looks more like the other code editor was looking so if I go now to again to the code you can see the text is larger it's closer to the size the other code editor had and this timeline over here is staying here even if I go and I refresh the page so it's not getting erased you're gonna have the history of the file in there in detail I get that this editor is quite a change from the other code editor and I get that this is not a mobile friendly yet so if I go in mobile view this is not mobile friendly so you won't be able to edit code on the go Shopify might want to add that later I'm not sure but I think that Shopify is adding this code editor in here because they want to make life easier for us on the long run I think that there will be a marketplace for extensions extensions that will help us edit code better and I think they're gonna add a code assistant like cursor has where you can select something and then press a combination of keys to interact with the AI and ask about the code and ask it to write code for you and so on things that were probably not possible in the old code editor that was created some time ago so I think overall even though confusing this change is a step forward of course there are a bunch of things that they have to fix like the saving thing and then the mobile friendliness some people will try to edit code on the go I'm not sure if this will become more beginner friendly I think this is it because they will try to keep the code editor on the VS code frame so if VS code changes anything this will probably change but otherwise I don't think that, that they will actually develop 
the code editor itself but in my point of view only the global search feature is a huge huge advantage and probably github will be integrated soon and other extensions as i mentioned so bear with it because i think this will be in our advantage if you have other questions about this code editor don't hesitate to write me inside the comments i might make a video about it and if you've been interested in this video i think you'll be interested in this video as well click it and i'll see you there